It is the middle of summer in the UK and it's actually rather hot in most parts of the country at the moment. So we are very relieved to be uh, in the air conditioned studio once again, second week in a row. Uh, only because we've been brought into the office for all sorts of other reasons. But the Royal Rotor podcast comes to you courtesy of the studio, which hopefully means you can hear us and see us a little bit more clearly than when we're at home. Lovely think? being back, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're back in the studio. Um, the Royals uh, this week, it's been, um, I'd say what I will remember most about this week is the photos, wouldn't you say? Those were lovely photographs. Yeah, some but... really interesting photos that have come out. Um, but you're not going to talk about them because you're going to let me do my... No, I'm not going to talk about them, <laughs> so then you can do your run through the week. But I, I mean, that, that would be probably what I remember of the, uh, of the royal week that was. Um, still no sign of the Queen um, since uh, her, una her official birthday celebrations. But, um, but we, have had, we have had a public engagement in person this week, haven't we, with Prince William? So yes, absolutely. We are beginning um, to come back out, absolutely. out and about. And more that we can talk about um, as the days progress, but can't talk about now, but you probably are <laughs> used to that if you're a regular viewer of this uh, podcast. Um, if you're viewing it, you're watching it on YouTube, you can subscribe to ITV News on YouTube. Um, just search um, Royal Road to ITV on any other podcast platform, be that Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And you can hear every week Lizzie's or Robinson's Royal Rundown. And then you can get a very brief um, summary of what's happened during the week. And then you can turn off and <laughs> not listen to the rest <laughs> to of the it. other 30 minutes. <laughs> yes. So I better do right. a comprehensive job and not right. the RRR, the Robinson's Royal Rundown. Else. Off you go. So I'll start with those photographs then that you've, uh, you've Talked about. queued up for me. Right. So these were photographs of the Duke of Cambridge and his three young children. And they were to mark his 38th birthday, which was on Sunday, but also Father's Day here in the UK. And in addition to the, uh, the family photographs from the Cambridges, there was also a photograph of the Duke of Cambridge with his father, the Prince of Wales, that they posted on their social media to wish him a very happy birthday. A birthday and Father's Day in one day. They were lovely. All of them. Cambridge all of them yeah. were really lovely. Okay, we'll go through those in a sec. So Prince William uh, then had a visit this week in person. He went to Oxford University to meet the Oxford Vaccine Group and they are working on developing developing a vaccine against COVID-19. So very important work there. Um, it was also Children's Hospice Week in the UK. And, and they we, first four. A royal first. We had the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duchess of Cambridge on their first joint engagement, just the two of yes. them. Not in the same place, but in the no. same... The same Zoom call. Sphere, yes. Same sphere, yes. So we've seen them do things together with other people, but it's yeah. the first one, just the two of them. No, yeah, OK, and I'll talk in a minute about what, what is their relationship. It's, it's step-mother-in-law, I think, step isn't it? Step-mother-in-law, yes. Step-daughter-in-law, right, OK. And then Harry and Meghan, the Sussexes. Ah, we've had we haven't a, mentioned them for a few weeks. What are they we doing? We haven't. We've had a couple of things from them this week. Firstly, they have signed up with a very large and successful speaking agency based in New York. Right. Not for free, one imagines. Not for free, one right. would imagine. And they've also been out volunteering with a, uh, a group called Homeboy Industries. Right. So we've okay. had some social media posts and some pictures of them. And we will talk about that uh, shortly. So um, let, let's do the photos then, because you know what? You get used to royal photos being quite formal. Well, they certainly have been over the years. And suddenly, I think since, I think particularly since Kate has started taking pictures, a sudden informality has crept in. We saw it first with her kids and we saw it fairly recently. Remember when Louis had all the sort of rainbow paint all over his hands? Um, I thought there was something quite unique, not just about William with his children, but the, the one that struck me the most was William with his father, Prince Charles. That's sort of um, very close. Yeah, a real... Well, at least the photo spoke of a close bond. <laughs> Whether one exists in real life is another matter, but... So this was taken at Sandringham at Christmas by the Duchess of Cambridge, as you say. And, yeah, I thought it showed a real bond between father and son and sort of, you know, they looked very natural together, yeah. I thought. But um, I think the photos that Kate does, it's quite a clever way of releasing photographs and images of the family without having official photographers in. They sort of show us a little bit of the children, yeah. but, but they get to manage it. And, and I agree with you there, because I think it gives them the ability to manage it, knowing that the appetite is there for, for photos of her children, um, but managing it herself. And, and by doing that, I suppose you're killing the market effectively for the paparazzi shots, the ones where they're hiding in bushes, because why do, you know, why do readers of 
magazines or, or viewers of podcasts like this want to see grainy pictures that have been taken at the end of a long lens when the mother of these children is releasing some very, you know, yeah. touching ones of them in any case. And I think she will get the best out of them because they feel most mm. comfortable with her. So, you know, the children did look really relaxed and those lovely ones of them all rolling around on the floor together. But my favourite was the swing. I thought yeah. the swing photo was really lovely. And did you know the swing they're on? I was going to ask you this question. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> you can ask me. thought to be uh, a present from Prince Charles yes. for their wedding. It says yeah. William and Catherine on one side, and I think on the other side it's got the date you can just etched see it. in, yeah. uh, which is, um, you correct me if I'm wrong, April 2011. Correct. I don't know the exact day, <laughs> but you might. Correct. 2011. You okay. Yeah, but <laughs> the day in April? Oh, oh there we are. We so we, we finally uh, <laughs> caught each other out. Um, and again, um, I, I agree with you. I think that so the the, uh, the swing picture, the one with uh, Prince Charles and his father, and actually there was a host of um, Father's Day pictures. There was one of the Duke of Edinburgh with a very young Princess Anne and Prince Charles, presumably taken in 1952 or thereabouts. Um, there was one with um, Prince Charles and his two boys, Harry and William, uh, you know, in the late 1990s as well, wasn't there? After so it looked like a polo match. Yeah. Um, so you know there was a there was plenty of Father's Day pictures to to goggle at if you so wanted to. Yeah, no, they were lovely, and I think those images made most of the front pages, which is probably no surprise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Monday's front pages here in the UK. I mean, pretty much every single one had that picture of William and his and his father having that sort of cuddle, I suppose. Or yeah, uh, I think we could yeah. call it a Can sort we call of it a cuddle, a cuddle, yeah. or a lean in, whatever you, <laughs> shoulder whatever, rub, <laughs> whatever you call it. Um, and, and therefore, that I mean, that brings us quite neatly onto a father-son relationship to step-mother-in-law, step-daughter-in-law relationship. Uh, but I mean, again, I mean, this is a very serious topic. It's about children's hospices and an issue that's dear to both of their hearts. Kate being the, the, the patron of a hospice in East Anglia, Camilla yeah. being patron of a couple of hospice groups so as well. Camilla is a patron of uh, Children's Hospice South West and Helen and Douglas House and Kate is patron of East Anglia Children's Hospice and that was one of her first patronages. She took that on in 2012, so yeah. not long after that wedding you were just talking yeah, about. On, on, on the something of April 2011. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's probably worth just having a little listen because you can actually even tell, I thought you could tell from just listening to their conversations how much those hospices mean. Camilla, for example, spoke about how she was apprehensive when she first went to see a hospice, but then she suddenly realised they're places of warmth and love. And I suppose it's a word that you don't often associate with hospices, but happiness. Yeah, and Kate talked about the amazing staff and how they create a sort of environment that's a home away from home and they did both seem genuinely sort of touched by the work that's being done at these hospices. Thank you all for zooming in to join Catherine and I today at the start of Children's Hospice Week. I was going to start before I asked all of you to to share your experiences by um, describing what I felt like when I first went to visit a children's hospice. Helen and Douglas House, as it was then, Helen House, I think it was about 13 years ago. And I have to admit, I was filled with a certain amount of trepidation because I wasn't sure what I was going to find. When I arrived, I was totally uh, amazed by what I found, the feeling of warmth and laughter and happiness. And since then, I've obviously visited Children's Hospice South West and whatever hospice, children's hospice I've been to, I've felt that same warmth and, and laughter. And um, obviously the nurses and the carers who look after these children are the most wonderful people. And they just sort of inspire happiness. It's an uplifting experience, isn't it? Going in, which was the opposite to what I thought it was gonna be. Obviously I'm a massive fan of the work that the staff do. And the fact that, you know, families are able to live as close to their home environment as they possibly can in what is really difficult circumstances is extraordinary and it's credit to the staff really that can provide the environment to help them go through um, whether it's long-term care or short-term care it's really yeah it's really awe inspiring and there was a bit just at the end of that zoom call where they asked the family that they were speaking to the Delft family um, who sadly lost their son Fraser earlier this year and uh, they asked the the little uh, brother uh, what he was doing to raise funds uh, in memory of Fraser. But I hear um, you've been doing lots of fundraising. 
which has been amazing. Well, I did do 5K every day in May. Who inspired you to, to start running 5K every day? Captain Tom did. Oh, Captain Tom. Captain Tom has done a lot for this country, hasn't he? So <laughs> he's inspired so many people. You must be very fit, Stewie. And Lizzie, I mean, I mean, a really sad situation they've been in. But um, yet again, as Camilla said at the end there, it's all about Captain Tom and how many people he's inspired around the country to, to do things. Yeah, Stewie's only 13 and quite remarkable doing a 5K every day in yeah, May to raise money. Every day. And he wanted to do that because um, hospices like these that were on the Zoom call have really been hit by a fundraising slump during yeah. COVID. And he wanted to do something to help the hospice. And something that wasn't on the Zoom call um, that we spoke to the Delft family about in an interview afterwards, we joined them for a chat. Uh, the Duchess of Cambridge pledged to uh, plant a sunflower in memory of Fraser, who sadly died in January, which was really sweet. He asked what uh, Fraser's favourite um, flowers were. He was quite a bright uh, little fella, um, always shone bright. And, um, and she said she'd like to... Uh, to do that for us. Very um, humble, but uh, really still reeling in the fact that we were talking to the royal family and, and uh, for her to, to say such a lovely gesture is, is amazing. And later in the podcast, I will tell you about someone else who has been inspired by Captain Tom that's caught the royal's attention this week uh, as well. Um, while we're on the, you know, you mentioned about coronavirus affecting fundraising for hospices and things. Um, coronavirus is, is the thing the whole world is trying to beat at the moment. And uh, Prince William... Oh, where very a, good segue. That's you like you're segues, a paid professional. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Prince William had to wear a mask in order to, uh, you know, to go and see some of the work that's being done to find a vaccine when he went to Oxford this week. Yes, yeah, he went to Oxford University to visit the Oxford Vaccine Group and they're working to develop a vaccine against coronavirus and we are all praying that mm. they will manage Aren't to we, do yeah. that. Yes, because everyone says, like, without the vaccine, this, this thing is still in the air, it's yeah. still around, and uh, you know nothing can really move on that quickly until the vaccine is discovered. And the facility he was at, the government's chief scientific advisor said this week, it's probably, probably, the most advanced in the world. Mm. So, you know, if, we, if they can create a cure for this, that would yeah. be, or a vaccine and against this, that would be incredible. But yeah, Ma uh, William was in a mask, coat, goggles, and I think he's the first member of the royal family we've seen on a public engagement yes. wearing a mask. Yeah, although Sophie, we think Countess of Wessex has worn them on when she's private been, um, volunteering. Sort of volunteering yeah. and, um, and he spoke to some of the, uh, what do you call them, volunteers, guinea pigs, some of those who are doing the trials um, to see if this, this vaccine is going to work. Yeah, people he met, those involved um, who are taking, members of the public who are taking part to see if, if it will work. Mm. I mean, uh, we're all praying, I'm sure Prince William is as well, uh, th th that it will. Um, I thought one of the key conversations he had, though, I've had to, I've highlighted it here, that he said that he, he told the scientists he'd recently spoken to an expert who said there were 1.5 million potential viruses that could hop from animals into humans. And William said, hopefully this will be a wake up call to people. Blimey. That was sort of the most <laughs> slightly worrying. Terrifying. How many yeah. did you say it was? 1.5 million. Million, right. OK, so coronavirus might be the least of our worries. Yeah, and I, I think um, it's sort of... Yeah, I, you can see why they're, they're putting on so much so much stall into this particular vaccine. Um, Harry and Meghan, we haven't spoken about them in this podcast, unusually so, for quite a few weeks. Um, we've spoken about their legal action, the, what the Duchess is doing... Um, against the uh, the action she's taking against the mail on Sunday. We've spoken about all, all sorts of other things. Um, and they've been very quiet during the lockdown, haven't they? Yeah, well, I think we, were, we always said we were surprised, actually, how much we heard from them initially, because when they stepped back as senior working, senior <laughs> working members of the royal family, get my sentence right there, they said that they wanted to take some time out to regroup and refocus on what they were going to do in the future and then we were hearing quite a lot from them so actually I think this is a period for them to sort of go away regroup and think about the future 
Yeah, and actually, I mean, is that okay? So, the, so their um, charity foundation, whatever it's now called, uh, Archie World, we think, um, it has been delayed, and there's no real time scale for that to get up and running while they focus on a couple of things. One is the world's response to COVID, but also they want to be front and centre in, in, in the campaign uh, in the US and elsewhere, Black Lives Matter, um, or, or as they refer to it as the racial in, uh, injustice, sorry, the racial justice movement. Um, and that was... I presume behind their visits to to home boys and home girls. Yeah, this is a they were helping with a cooking program which is providing food to those in need sort of during covid, but because they don't have their own social media platforms anymore, mm. those are inactive or dormant, they're having to rely on organizations like Homeboy to put the photographs up and alert us to the work yeah. that they're actually yeah. doing. Well, I they find that quite frustrating not having their own social media channels on which to sort of um I mean, you are, you are, you're less in control, aren't you? And I mean, they were criticised for, 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 you know, for setting up that website, Sussex Royal, and calling it Royal and all the rest of it. Um, I'm sure work is going on about uh, you know, setting up their own social media platforms, but at the moment, they are without. They are without. And so yeah. the only way, you know, we can hear from them or see them is if people do it on their behalf. So like when they did the Save the Children reading for Archie's birthday that went up on the Save the Children site and they've done the volunteering now that's gone up on Homeboys yeah. social media. Homeboys and Homegirls isn't it I mean and it's run by a chap called Father Greg Boyle who um, just just looks out for people who have formerly been in prison or those that have been former members of gangs. Yeah and he worked closely with Megan's former high school in LA Immaculate Heart High School right. and her and Doria her mother had uh, worked with him, met him mm. 20 years ago. So they have It sounds a... like a pretty good school, Immaculate Heart, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, everything you hear about it in terms of the way they encourage their um, girls to sort of go out into the community to volunteer. And, you know, you look at Megan, a very impressive um, woman who's known around the world for, you know, her work. Then, I, I mean, you've got to say it's a pretty impressive school, Immaculate Yeah, Heart. I mean, they, they're clearly encouraging their girls to talk about important issues, yeah. have a voice, take notice of what's going on around them in society. And like mm. you say, you can see that with Megan. Um, so you know, this, this was volunteering, of course, but they still need to earn money, don't they? They and, still need to I earn mean, some so, money. So Prince Charles is essentially paying for them, you know, for the interim or for however, however how long father and son have agreed um, to, for, for money to be handed over that way. But they've got to, as they said, they wanted to. They've got to earn their own money. And we learned this week how they are going to earn some of that money in quite order a, to quite pay a bit, for their I think. lifestyle or, or whatever it is they want to do. Yeah, so they said when they stepped back that they wanted to become financially independent. Yeah. And they've got quite a big bill to pay off in Frogmore. So they also promised that they would pay back the £2.4 million of taxpayers' money that was used to refurbish Frogmore. And then they're also paying rent on that. So that's quite a whack of money. And but, not living um, there or haven't lived there since uh, they so, left the country yeah. in um, April or March. But a signing this week should probably help. They've signed with a Harry Walker agency, which right. dubs itself the world's leading speakers agency. It's got clients like the Clintons, the Obamas, as I said right. earlier. And um, they could... The Robinsons, the ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just search, search yeah, yeah, for us. Definitely. Probably... I'm, I'm sure people from the Harry Walker agency are watching this podcast and will, will be offering us some <laughs> lucrative speaking yeah. deals very soon. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It's only so sorry, the Obamas, time. the Clintons, Serena Williams. Serena Williams is there. Tyler Perry, whose house they're living in right. in Los Angeles, is also a client. I mean, they have got a whole host of big names. I was looking yeah. through their website and, yesterday. And, and, and Obama doesn't speak for, for you know, for four dollars, does he? he no, um, people are saying they could earn hundreds of thousands of yeah. pounds per engagement, yeah. which is... Well, everyone wants to hear what they've got to say. So um, now's the time to monetize it, I suppose. Now they're free from the shackles of the royal family. Yeah, although they're saying, one thing they are saying is that they won't be talking about the royal family. They'll be talking about other issues close to their heart and they'll be t talking to trade associations, corporations, community forums but not about the royal family. Right. Well, Which is could... probably what <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> everyone wants to hear yes. about. And they could probably make a lot more money if they were to talk about the royal family. <laughs> um, talking of money, um, take a look at these pictures if you're watching on YouTube or just head on to our social media channels. Um, my Twitter, Chris Ship ITV. Um, what do you make of this plane? Um, it's a plane that we go in, funnily enough. It's an RAF Voyager that belongs to the Royal Air Force. Um, it used to be grey, now... Not so grey. Now, not so grey. No. No. It was grey with 
Royal Air Force in white letters. Pretty course, military, right wasn't it? Pretty basic. Being um, a military plane, yeah. yep. Well, um, let's just give you, a, I mean, if you um, either don't follow these things or you're living outside the UK. So the, the Prime Minister's plane, uh, I suppose the equivalent of Air Force One would be the easiest way to explain this, um, is uh, a military jet uh, run by the Royal Air Force, which when it's not being used by VIPs, it does air-to-air -air refuelling, whether it's the big tanker in the sky where jets plug in and get their, their fuel for long voyages. Um, well, the reason we go on it is because it's also the plane for the Queen, uh, for the Prince of Wales. William and Kate's used it to get to Pakistan uh, recently. When we had that, when we had that unexpected. <laughs> when we had the turbulence in the yeah. air, uh, which um, left many of us a little shaken yeah. um, at the end of it. Um, but now the plane uh, has had this facelift. Um, it's partly it's a government thing, really. I mean, the government have paid nearly a million pounds, 900,000 pounds to have this thing repainted. I mean, I would have done it for half that price with my I would have probably done it for, a, yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> a tenner, to be honest. Um, and it's, uh, it's now going to be uh, like a flag carrier, I suppose you might say, when it takes the Prime Minister to G20s, G7s, when it takes uh, Prince of Wales around the place. Funny enough, the Queen has never used it. Um, I remember uh, speaking about this to, to Maggie, one of the correspondents from ABC, that is, the Queen gets first call on the plane, but where she doesn't travel abroad anymore, she never gets to use the thing. Um, but, but the, I mean, the, the Prince of Wales uses it a lot, yeah. and he's often travelling sort of on behalf as the most senior member of the family. He's the most senior mem travelling member of the family, exactly. The Queen's last trip was 2015 to Malta. To Malta, when this plane didn't exist, incidentally. Um, and then the Prime Minister uses it for political things. But anyway, so um, if you see that in the skies above you, um, not to be mistaken for a British Airways plane, it's actually the government plane. Um, and it, for some reason, it's very controversial in the UK because every other country seems to have a plane for its Prime Minister or President, and that's just part of the job, if you like, just like having a you know, a, a car or what's a, President Trump's car called? The Beast, it's like having one of those limousines. And yet in it, here, because it's public money, everyone always has a real hoo-ha about the royals and the, and the prime minister flying about in a plane. Yeah, I mean, the prime minister's argument is that he wants a plane that sort of advertises the UK on the world stage. But uh, there's been a lot of controversy about the cost of this thing, mm. nearly a million pounds, particularly at a time when we are going through a pandemic and there are huge economic consequences for what's going on. Yeah. I think a million pounds for a lot of people seems like yes. a lot of money. But the government argument is that if you're going to rock up abroad somewhere, then here's a big advert for the UK yeah. uh, rather than a, a sort of boring old grey jet turning up. But well, um, Let's hope it's anyway, not too if we, long If we ever travel with the Royals ever again. <laughs> we get on it again, <laughs> we'll, I, we'll, fingers we'll crossed. I mean, how many times have we won it? We went on it when we went to Cuba with uh, the Prince of Wales, didn't we? We've been, we went up to Pakistan. Yeah. We've been to um, a couple of France on it. I mean... Anyway, it gets used yes, fairly often. So, um, often. but it's, I think we th we think we're right in saying the order is the Queen, the Prince of Wales, then the Prime Minister, then Prince William and Kate. I think, yes. uh, but um, no one below him gets to use it. Yeah, we never went on it with the Sussexes. Yes, no, they, um, they had to. But we have been on it with the Cambridges. Planes. And often there's a tussle between the uh, the politicians and the Royals if they want to use the plane at the same time. But that's that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> who who pays? Um, I was I told you earlier about. Um, someone who was inspired by William and Kate, uh, sorry, someone who was inspired by Captain Tom, who's been noticed by William and Kate. Oh, and if you yes. go on the Kensington Royal um, Instagram page, you'll see a picture of a, of a lovely little boy. Um, he's called Tony Hudgel. Um, Tony suffered, I mean, it's a heartbreaking story. He suffered some injuries as a baby uh, as a direct result of his um, parents um, who have now been um, convicted, but uh, he, uh, despite his difficulties with walking, uh, he has been, been inspired by Captain Tom and is, is raising funds um, and he's aiming to walk 10 kilometres for Evelina London Children's Hospital. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, it's a beautiful picture of him. And it's actually, really lovely. And yeah. The, yeah, as you say, the account was paying tribute to him. And I think, you know, the Duchess of Cornwall said the other week that the NHS during this pandemic has shown the best of Britain, but actually I think it's shown the best of Britain in lots of different ways, and this is just yeah, one example. And, as and is also Captain how, Tom. how far Captain Tom has reached. Actually, while I'm on there, I'm just going to like that picture because I've just noticed I haven't liked it yet, so I think I'll add mine to the... Um, 
however many else. I'm sure you've all joined it, I'd like to actually, tuned in to our, see um, Chris's our, social media activity. Yes, <laughs> yeah, while I'm on the phone, just you know, answering calls. Take any calls you've, you've <laughs> yeah. got or whatever, do your diary. Uh, I did actually, I had a call from one of the palaces where we're in here, which is why I had to uh, respond oh, to gosh. them. Maybe they um, were phoning to issue a complaint or not. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, good luck to Tony. And actually one of our um, sister news services, ITV London, went and filmed with him the other day. So have a look at these pictures. I want to raise money for that, my hospital. Oh, why do you want to raise money for them? Because they helped me save my life. He was broken, tiny, shut down. He'd had multiple operations, um, but we fell in love with him and adopted him the following year. He's got more fight, grit and determination than the whole family put together. Um, he is very determined, but then he wouldn't be here today if he wasn't, because he wouldn't have survived. Uh, before we go then, um, I have news. The 29th of April, 2011, was... 29th, uh, well done. It just popped into my head. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, sure. I haven't Googled sure. it. Or All anything, that time you're doing those social anything media anything like posts. Uh, <laughs> before we go, I just wanted to uh, pay tribute to someone that I used to work with here at ITV called uh, Harry Smith, who was one of our reporters who was here for many, many years. And um, he died last week uh, at the too young age of 69. He was a friend and colleague to many people uh, in, in this newsroom. And in and amongst the tributes that we've paid to him, both privately in this newsroom, but also publicly on air and on social media, uh, was his little chat with the Queen, wasn't it? This is so lovely. I love this clip. It's uh, the Queen is on a walkabout in Scotland, just ahead of a World Cup match in 1998 between England and Argentina. And uh, Harry seems to have got himself amongst the public, it looks like. And he asks the Queen if she's going to be watching. And she sort of says, oh, what time is it? Someone says, eight o'clock, Mum. And um, she says, oh, well, I've got a dinner party then. Well, and and one, one, really must, one really must watch it. But we shall uh, play you that clip. it's unclear about whether the Queen knew that Harry Smith was a reporter from uh, one of the networks here in the UK, as he was then, or whether... Um, he was just a member of the public. But um, nevertheless, um, we are going to leave you with that clip of Harry Smith talking to the Queen as our tribute, our very small tribute on this podcast, to our friend and colleague, Harry Smith. Are you watching the match tonight, Mum? Yeah. I don't know what time it is. Eight o'clock, Mum. Oh, Will you be cheering on party. England? Well, I think I'm sure.